semiconductors pervade every aspect of our life uh, irrespective of whether it is uh, automobiles or aviation or even services such as banking and insurance uh, so a lot of countries including the us have made significant investments uh, in trying to get companies to restart manufacturing critical components within their own boundaries chips is one such component so as far as uh, india's foray into chip manufacturing was concerned um, the past fortnight has seen significant activity on this front all three of the all four of these chip manufacturing ventures that have been announced will be eligible uh, for some incentives from the government they are all part of what is called the pli scheme designing semiconductors is a fairly uh, complex process and india has always had a presence and a significant presence in, in that part where it is not had a presence is in the manufacturing of semiconductors when supply chains get disrupted the supply of chips gets disrupted and chips unfortunately um, are the manufacturing is heavily concentrated in one part of the world in, in this case it's taiwan uh, we are here to talk about uh, semiconductors this week and specifically about uh, what india is doing in the area of semiconductors now it's very important to understand why a country needs to have a presence in what is perhaps the most important business in the world the most important simply because semiconductors pervade every aspect of our life uh, irrespective of whether it is uh, automobiles or aviation or even services such as banking and insurance uh, semiconductors are at the heart of it uh, people speak about uh, the big artificial intelligence revolution but the artificial intelligence revolution would not be possible without the gpus that nvidia makes and which which in turn have made nvidia uh, one of the most valuable companies in the world today so it's very important for any country to have a presence in semiconductors now the semiconductor value chain is a long value chain you, know, you could you could enter many different aspects of it and the interesting thing about this is that india has always had a presence in the design part of this value chain which is actually a fairly uh, high end part of the value chain it's it's not one of these uh, low end uh, sourcing kind of things right to give you an example something like where uh, you're just supplying uh, mid level cotton to companies which in turn makes jeans make jeans and sell them uh, designing semiconductors is a fairly uh, complex process and india has always had a presence and a significant presence in in that part where it is not had a presence is in the manufacturing of semiconductors and and i think uh, what many countries around the world have realized thanks to covid and then the supply chain disruptions first caused by uh, the russia ukraine war and now by uh, uh, the israel uh, war on hamas is, is the fact that when supply chains get disrupted the supply of chips gets disrupted and chips unfortunately um, Uh, the manufacturing is heavily concentrated in one part of the world in, in this case it's taiwan so it makes sense for uh, countries to sort of diversify their risk uh, just like investors diversify the risk in their portfolio countries have to diversify the risk in their sourcing so every country needs to get into some aspects of uh, semiconductor manufacturing now will every country be competitive uh, now the word competitive itself is a very 80s construct it's an 80s construct because in the a the 80s the 70s and the 80s where the big uh, saw a big boom in uh, globalization around the world uh, large multinational corporations started sourcing products sub assemblies components from countries where it was most competitive to source them from and um, it was easy to source them but if there are going to be artificial shocks to supply chains if supply chains are going to break down because of either covid or because of some war that is happening um, then what happens and and that is why it becomes important uh, to do what's called insuring as opposed to outsourcing or insourcing or insuring is what uh, people call this uh, so a lot of countries including the us have made significant investments uh, in trying to get companies 
to restart manufacturing critical components within their own boundaries. Chips is one such component. So as far as uh, India's foray into chip manufacturing was concerned, um, the past fortnight has seen significant activity on this front because uh, the government has announced that three new plants are going to be set up, two in Gujarat and one in Assam, uh, one by a Murugappa Group venture. The Murugappa Group is one of India's oldest corporate groups based in Chennai and two by the Tata Group, which again is, is a, another one of India's old corporate groups. These three are in addition to the chip manufacturing facility that Micron announced last year during the Prime Minister's visit to the United States. A lot of these, uh, in fact, all three of the, all four of these chip manufacturing ventures that have been announced will be eligible uh, for some incentives from the government. They're all part of what is called the PLI scheme, which is the production linked incentive scheme. And there have been some critics of this who believe that the government has no business in giving SOPs to companies to make things uh, because, you know, you, you, it's like bribing people to make things. But that's not how manufacturing works. Uh, around the world, uh, in most industries, if, if you go back and you look at the history, you will see that uh, companies and industries need a sort of boost to get started. And then once they pick up momentum, I think the benefits are really manifold. The classic example of this is mobile phones in India. When India announced its uh, PLI scheme for mobile phones, India was an insignificant player in the mobile phones business. Uh, this year, for instance, we have exported, I mean, last year, 2023, we exported $11 billion worth of uh, mobile phones. And I'm told that in the next four or five years, this number could, get to, to, could touch close to $50 billion. This is a significant amount. And the main reason it's happened is because at some point in time, right at the beginning, someone said, OK, great. This is an industry where there is, an put where there is potential, where there is an opportunity, and we need to give it a boost. And the same thing is happening in uh, semiconductor manufacturing. Worst case scenario, even if India does not become extremely competitive in semiconductors, at least you have a strategic presence in an industry to ensure that there is no disruption that is ever going to happen if there is a pandemic. I mean, God willing, there shouldn't be one. But in case there is another pandemic or in case of any other disruption because of a geopolitical conflict, you are ensuring that your own critical industries can continue to function. And I think that is really one of the most important things that countries need to focus on.